In the early days of wireless networks, we didn't have to worry too much about compatibility because there were only two standards, and those two standards were very, very different. On one hand, you had 802.11a, which used 5 gigahertz frequencies, but it was one that had a limited distance that it could use in most environments. The other hand, you had 802.11b, a completely different set of frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz. So there was more interference you had to deal with, and it was slower, but you could go much farther with the distances. Because these two standards were so different, there was no need to be compatible. They're using different frequencies and communicating in a completely different way. When 802.11g came out, however, there was a need to be more compatible. And because 802.11g used 2.4 gigahertz frequencies, it matched and was backwards compatible with the 802.11b. In fact, that was built into the standard that 802.11g devices, access points, had to be able to communicate with the 802.11b devices. However, when you mix those standards together, you also reduce the total amount of speed that you can get through those networks. So although you were having this compatibility and able to go back and use those older and slower devices, it slowed down the entire wireless network. If you really wanted an optimal 802.11g network, then every device really did need to be upgraded to 802.11g. With 802.11n, it became a little bit more complicated, but still there was a need to maintain some compatibility between the different versions. One of the challenges you have with n is that is both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequencies that you can use at the same time. There's also built into 802.11n a legacy mode so that the n access point can pretend to look like an A, a B, or a G access point, and therefore you have some compatibilities right there. There. There's also something called a mixed mode format, which means you can use 802.11n, but you can also communicate with 802.11g or 802.11b so that you can use those older devices at the same time as using the newer devices. But just as 802.11g suffered from performance when you did that, you've got the same situation. If you really wanted the fastest 802.11n network that you can have, then everybody will need to be running a pure 802.11n. 11n set of standards. Otherwise, your wireless network is not going to be as optimal as you want. But the important thing to know is that you are able to use these newer access points and these newer technologies, but still be able to have backwards compatibility with the other devices that are on your network.